Somebody tell Love people you. that we're we here lost to Kayla. talk about books. Shit. No, we didn't. Oh, we did. Oh, mm -hmm. am I frozen? Am I frozen? You're frozen. Still frozen. Still frozen. Uh, does somebody want to like uh, throw up on the Discord? Not actually throw up, but <laughs> throw say, up on the Discord. <laughs> say hey, we're we're gonna talk books. If you want to join. Yeah. How do we share the link? Um, here she is. Yeah, there we go. Do I just copy and paste the link, or is it like a yeah, special? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And just no, say no. hey, book club. Book are club. We, okay. Are we live? Live? Or are we? Yeah, we're totally live live. Okay, cool. Live live. <laughs> Double I love live. It. I love it. Um, <laughs> triple live. And I'm, I don't know, my eyes watering. It's weird. Uh, I'll cut this part out. It's good fine. call. Everything, everything went I do. as soon as we went live. We were so good. <laughs> Hit the button and then they just all fell. Yeah, everything falls apart. Yeah. Hey! That's not the right. That's a... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I put the wrong. We're, we're very insightful and knowledgeable. Oh, man. <laughs> if you liked peace, stick around for Cersei. <laughs> it's going to be even more engaging. Hey. Well, we have two extra people here. Two extra insights of people uh, who read half the book. Um, <laughs> Way to call us out. <laughs> yeah, at <laughs> least I read the whole book. <laughs> Look, I tried. Yeah. Oh, my eye. Okay. Like, seriously, <laughs> mask here in my eye or something. Okay. Hey, hello and welcome to this. This is where I'm starting. I've cut everything else out. All right. So <laughs> at, let's make it an even two minutes in. Yeah, exactly. All right. Hello and welcome to Even Footing Games. <laughs> Book Club. <laughs> This month, we're discussing Circe by Madeline Miller. And uh, because we're going to actually put this up on a podcast one of these days, um, I'm going to start introducing people. And so let's start with Alana. Hello, I'm Alana. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to introduce myself. Oh, no. <laughs> You're off to a good start. Yeah. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have thrown it to you first. <laughs> no, no. I'm trying to think of how to introduce myself. You're uh, an artist. I'm an and... artist at Even Footing Games. <laughs> I don't do the writing, I do the art. <laughs> you but make she does a lot of reading. I do do reading, yes. That is uh, yep. a thing I do. Um, I also am a dice maker, and I make lots of dice. So I'm, my dice company is called Spectral Craft. And you can find me on Instagram at spectralcraft.c or no, sorry, spectralcraft dice. Spectralcraft dice. Yes, that's the one. <laughs> <laughs> she made us special babies and broadswords dice. That is also yeah. our company. We make a board or a board game. We made a TT, TTRPG called Babies and Broadswords. Fun for everyone. Some young children, adults who want to make poop jokes, everybody in between. Um, Who wants to make poop jokes? Yep. Uh, next, we've got a first-time guest, friend of the company, one of our pals here, Kayla, all the way from Potions and Potpourri, the best gal pal podcast around. Wow. What an intro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, that says it all. I'm one half of the gal pals from Potions and Potpourri, which is a casual chat D and D slash TTRPG podcast. We have played Babies and Broadswords on our show, and it was a big hit. Amazing. I think I'm the only one here not affiliated with Even Footing Games. Not for lack of us trying. <laughs> <laughs> we would like to steal all of our friends to come be a part of our team. I hear you guys pay really well, so. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> so good. Great. Great benefits, yes. <laughs> the benefits are friendship. Aww. Yeah. Aww. Friendship is the best benefit. For sure. And you can totally get health care with friendship. So. <laughs> this is America. We don't have health care anyway. Um, <laughs> next is a friend who we turned into a person at Even Putting Games. Go for it, Rick. <laughs> friend turned into a person. 
<laughs> Turn into an even Thank fun you. games person. Thank you for a real boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'm Rick. I'm the game master for Hammer of the Gods, where uh, you see a couple of these fine people. Uh, actually, almost everyone has been on there at some point. Uh, we are a D&D ish podcast uh, based loosely around Greek mythology, so this is, you know, right up our alley. That's me. <laughs> and Jason. Hi, everyone. I'm Jason. I'm with Even Footing Games as well. Uh, I'm the creative director and I do a lot of the writing. And uh, unlike some people, I actually managed to read the entire book for this month. <laughs> so I can't wait to talk about it. To be fair, Aaron, the whole the, the, the whole of it, the, uh, the, the the whole parts that I read, the the beginning, middle, <laughs> and the end of it, yeah. Aaron read it in like one day, so yeah. But she only yeah. read it one time, so she's like, it's a quick. Yeah, review. but if you want to flex, <laughs> I, I mean, you can't really flex life, on that. In my life, I've read it twice. <laughs> um, well, I, this wasn't like peace. You don't need to yeah, note up exactly. every five pages. No. Yeah, like you would. Um. So I'm Aaron. I'm, you know, the. Uh, everything else director at even putting games and like whatever people know me um <laughs> i don't know i just feel like it's dumb to introduce myself like i'm i feel like i'm on everything that we do well, which is yeah. kind what of what if this fair. is somebody's first time watching <laughs> exactly. or listening to even footing games yeah maybe I'm so here. far they're never coming back so i hope we yeah. can do yeah. better from here on. there you go Unless all right disaster book club reviews yeah Hey, okay, I'm ready. Because that's, that's the energy that I bring. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and uh, if they came for us to introduce ourselves, then now is the time to start listening. I'll put a time marker in, the, <laughs> in the video. Um, all right. So we read Circe by Madeline Miller. And, or at least some of us did. <laughs> God, are you going to keep calling us out animal. or what? I mean, so we're, we're only just a few minutes, so, uh, <laughs> I mean, you'll call yourself out plenty when we get to talking about the end of the book. And you're yeah. Should I leave? The I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I'll just stay for the beginning of the book talk, and then I'll leave, and you guys can finish. <laughs> there's, okay. there's this thing that I learned in college called Spark Notes, so I'm good. <laughs> okay. Did you just wiki it? Yeah, that's how it works. <laughs> you did. Um, so, first off, I kind of want to know how familiar... With Cersei as a mythical, ooh, very fancy, yeah. shiny covers. Shiny cover. I had it on audiobook, so I don't have a physical copy. Well, then if okay. you I just, I'm, I'm going to be that guy. I just hot take right off the bat. I don't think listening to a book is the same as reading a book. Oh, Jason. I'm okay. going to come right really out and going say it. I'm going, I'm going to be that guy right off the there bat. I think that they're both valid, but I get a different experience from listening yeah. versus reading. Yeah. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I retain a lot more from listening to books. Yes, yeah, I'm just. I'm an audio out. listener, yeah. and or an audio, audio learner. Yeah. Uh, audio learner and audiobooks are a valid form of reading, okay. and right. uh, Jason can suck it. Agree to disagree <laughs> about me sucking anything. Thank you. I mean, I, there are lots of books in the world that I have read. Do I enjoy being able to do my dishes while I'm listening yes. to books? Yes, I will I give do. you that. Yeah, that's valid. Yeah, uh, no, anyway. I, I, I listen to a lot of books on tape when I like, you know, when I used to, you know, drive delivery, pizza delivery in, in grad school and stuff like that. But I think, you know, I always get more out of reading the book than I do of listening. That's just I me. will say. Anyway. I, get, I guess I get that's both. just yeah. you. Yeah, it's I just me, both. apparently. So I read part of it, and then I listened to the audiobook for part of it, because, you know, it goes fa faster that way. Yeah, no shade on audiobooks, but I pretty much exclusively read. She gets it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not agreeing with you. I'm just saying that's I think how you, I, I, I you, you may not... Um, so Jason, you really, I don't but... know if you know this, but uh, gotcha. for the people saying. who are hip to the TikTok book talk thing this is a very hotly uh debated thing where everyone has decided that people who don't think audiobooks are reading has been branded an asshole so <laughs> well then i guess i'm playing to trope because i think i've already been <laughs> branded that way by most people so I, I guess i'm just fitting into that mold quite nicely okay uh this time i did not have a physical copy i'm real sorry jason because I bought the book back in 2018, 
when it came out and that's mm. how I listened to it and I listened to it again. So I will say, Erin, you're missing out by not having the physical book because it does have questions and topics for discussion in the back. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, that's yeah. handy. Wow. I had the... It's shiny. <laughs> I have the library <laughs> version, so... I had the digital copy, the reading oh. one. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be real wild, and I'm going to just come up with my own discussion questions, and you guys can read the ones out of the book if you'd like, but <laughs> I'm going to think about it for myself, okay? Yeah, can we can we compare how good your questions are compared to how good the book club questions are? <laughs> wow, this is this, this is, is a wild hot. ride. This is very yeah. spicy. It's all um, pass fail too. There's there's no letter grades, just pass fail. All right. Hey. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. Okay. Um, I want to know how familiar everyone was with Cersei as a mythological figure before reading this book. I yeah. I was very familiar. You were very um, familiar. Yeah, I remember. I remember Cersei from from having you know having to read the Odyssey and in, in school, and she mm -hmm. turned those uh, she turned Odysseus's guys into pigs, and that's yep. about yeah. Oh, that was written. About that was all that really. was. Yeah, right. I mean, I can't think of. I well, know, I yeah. mean, turn them into pigs, and then Odysseus lived there for a year with yeah. Them, and once she turned them all back. Which still happened in the book, you know. Right. So, but I mean, Odysseus lived with every woman he came across for a couple of years. He was kind of <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, he, I don't, listen. I don't think he was in the big a hurry to get home as he said he There's was. There's a reason it took him ten years to get back. Yeah, he was busy. <laughs> busy getting if, busy. I get it. If, if you look at the space of, of distance that he had to travel, it's it's a few thousand miles, really, at most. I mean, I mean shouldn't take you ten years to get yeah. He did say he was degrees. almost home, and then they opened the bag of wind and pushed him right back. So yeah, it's not like he so. didn't try. Yeah. How convenient! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So, Kayla, what about you? How familiar? None. None. Yeah, Same. I had very, very little knowledge of her as a mythological character. Same. So I read the Iliad, but never the Odyssey. Had no idea. Didn't know who this was. Uh, read it because. At the time it came up on my radar as a you know new greek mythology telling and so that was the first time that i had heard of her yeah and see that was your mistake because the iliad is objectively the worst book other than the fact that you know there's like the gay <laughs> subtext but it's Listen, very very subtextual uh i was really just doing this to be like a 16 year old who's like yeah when i read, yeah, I read the, the iliad, iliad. yeah <laughs> so beyond the iliad <laughs> Um, it was not for an assignment, and it sucked. So it's it's not exciting in yeah. the slightest. I mean, the Odyssey is a much more. It's kind of even like the Odyssey. Tolkien. Even the Odyssey is not all that exciting. Well, it's but, kind uh, of like Tolkien, where like there's a lot of just yeah, detail it, that you don't really need. Like, it's Iliad cool. is basically the Silmarillion. I mean, that's yeah. <laughs> um, also, compared a book that to, I never compared to the Odyssey's reading. Lord of the Rings series. Yeah, don't, yeah. don't bother. That. Don't bother. <laughs> it's a history book about shit that never existed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so Just Rick, like we know that you were familiar with all of the Greek mythology of Warm all it. time. You are no. you run a podcast based on <laughs> Greek mythology. You know all. You're the expert, so let's hear it. Mm, yeah. Uh, what am I? What am I saying as the expert? Because no, how how oh, familiar how were you? Oh, okay. Because you just said that I know all the things, so I thought that was my answer. Oh, <laughs> all of it. So you know all of it. Okay. Yeah, expert. Instantly. No, uh, I mean, I was familiar, but there were definitely parts of this, you know, we talked before we got on stream, uh, parts of it that I didn't realize were from stories that actually came after the Odyssey that I didn't know existed until today. So I learned stuff. Yeah, I guess that was the question I had, too. I didn't, I didn't like, go through the, the, the glossary or anything. Well, maybe I should have. But yeah, how much of this, of these major story beats were actually taken from actual Greek myths and how much were just connected to the Definitely so, not the Daedalus thing. Yeah. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, that, that I figured was, yeah. So this I did look up. Okay. Um, basically, uh, yes, she's the daughter of Helios. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, she has a brother and sister who are major mythological guys. Uh, uh, Aedes and Pasiphae. 
um, who is the mother of the Minotaur and then the father of Medea. Mm -hmm. Um, she is, uh, she is, uh, what is the word? She's sent to Aiaia to live oh, because exiled? of witchcraft. She's exiled. Yeah. It's exiled. And, um, other than that, the relationship also, with the, son, what? Her son is part well, of it. Yeah. yeah, she yeah. lives on Ayaya. Uh, she has wolves and lions. Uh, she turns men to pigs. She has a relationship with Odysseus. Other stories talk about her child that she had, up to three children that she had, depending on the story with Odysseus. Um, but other than that, and a few dealings with uh, Telemachus and Persef no, Penelope, Okay. Uh, yeah. who is uh, Telemachus's mother. Other than that, not much. Not, like, going to um, going to uh, Pacifier's uh, birth of the Minotaur, that's all made up the relationship with Daedalus. It's a fake myth. What? Fake myth. Fake Whatever. You know what I mean. <laughs> not a real myth. It's a and fake myth. Big man. Oh, layer on top of a layer. <laughs> yeah. Guys, I'm going to say this the whole time. Not real versus real. And that's, <laughs> you got to know what I mean. It's all myth, but whether or not it's based in mythology, real mythology. What is the, what is this that we're saying? Words are hard. Historical, <laughs> historical mythology, <Yeah>. maybe? <laughs> Our insightfulness is out the window already. <laughs> <laughs> so that's about the extent that she's a witch, okay. she practices magic, she's on Aiaia. Well, and then has son with Odysseus. And she, right. Yeah. But the son is actually not in the Odyssey at all. Right. That, right. That's, yeah, that is that a later story. Later story, yeah. as as much at, and as well as having dealings with Odysseus's wife and son. Uh, those are later stories, and some stories say that she had up to three children with Odysseus. I, which I did think it was admitted. interesting uh, to, you know, probably skip ahead a little bit, but the uh, the thing with the manta ray spear, that was part oh, of the yeah. myth as well. Like it wasn't, it wasn't exactly the way it was in the book, uh, because you know in the book it goes a little bit more in depth. But this, it was still a manta ray spear, uh, still killed Odysseus with it. So. Right. So, yeah, that's true. That that is how Odysseus dies. However, I don't know that it's in the Odyssey. No, again, okay. it was one of the later stories. It wasn't okay. the Odyssey. But, I mean, that's that's the whole thing with this is, you know, it ties in other myths besides just the Odyssey. Yeah. It'd be a really oh. short book. <laughs> yeah. Um. How does that, how did everybody, how did it sit with everybody? Like, what was your experience reading it? Did you like it? Did you finish it? All that kind of stuff. Totally finished it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you start? Oh, okay. <laughs> I know you finished it. So that's why I'm starting with you. Just how did you like it? How do you feel uh, about it? I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the themes. Uh, I, I kind of forgot a lot because there's a little bit of time <laughs> between now and when I finished reading it, but that, that might speak to it a little bit. But <laughs> the benefits of not reading it all at once. <laughs> <laughs> or at all. But um, yeah, for the majority of the story, I really enjoyed it. Um, I kind of liked how it ended too. I don't know if we want to give any spoilers, but yeah, I like the whole theme of morality versus immortality and like choosing one or the other kind of thing. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Uh, let's, let's also say uh, just a uh, brief uh, spoilers and also trigger warnings. Uh, the book does deal with uh, sexual assault to some extent. Um, anybody else can think of another triggering thing. Uh, graphic birth. I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess that's, I guess it's true. I mean, traumatic birth and 
bestiality. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> stuff that you would expect from Greek mythology. From a yeah, Greek yeah, yeah. Right. basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but other than that, so brief message me uh, mentions of that in this book. Um, nothing too graphic. It's I yeah. would not say that anything is uh, overly graphic or no. nothing is like praised as good behavior in it. Yeah. Uh, this is yeah. all, you know, categorically categorically not good behaviors. Even even the things that the gods do, I mean, it's mostly Cersei who's calling them out to herself, but yeah. you know, she definitely takes some time whenever she's having her introspective moments and is like, wow, these guys are really shitty. Um, well, yeah, she has a pretty crappy uh, you know upbringing like yeah. she's pretty uh left alone the the gods don't really mess with her she's in a kind of tenuous spot with between the titans and the gods because her father sided with the gods but is a titan mm -hmm. um let's uh did we ask jason about his enjoyment of the book first like mm -hmm. sorry before we get <laughs> into the we're just gonna skip over the rest of us um yeah i guess i'm kind of more alana was like I, I read it really early in the month and it didn't it's a quick read like I, I think i finished it in a day or two um if you have nothing going on for a weekend you can finish it in a day or two but if you're if you have a busy social life whatever your excuse is um <laughs> it might take a while but um yeah it was fine i enjoyed it but yeah nothing it didn't nothing really stuck with me but you know, we can talk about it. I'm, I'm excited to talk about it. Um, Rick and Kayla, you guys, uh, un, like, are, I don't, I assume that you're planning to finish it up, but did not get oh, yeah. quite through it. How, how was your experience? It, um, it wasn't like for the rest of us, it was a quick read, but so how did you experience the parts that you did get through? Good, Kayla. Um, I really liked it right from the beginning. Um, I think the writing is really engaging. It's like kind of flowery, but in a really like concise way, I guess. Um, it does a really good job of like describing things emotionally. Um, so I've been really into it, and I do think it's an easy read. I just haven't been able to take the time to actually sit down and read it as fast as it lends to. Um, something else that I've really liked so far, at least being halfway through, is just kind of the undercurrent of like feminism like the kind of feminist tone under there. Um, I use Storygraph right now for reading, so I've been like kind of making notes. We should be friends. Yeah, we should share notes. <laughs> uh, I so. Storygraph religiously. Cool. Yeah, then you don't so even have to been... read the book. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Just read Aaron's notes. <laughs> so I saved like a few quotes for like when we talk about specific things, but um, specifically like the feminism like undertone that I was saying one thing I really liked that I read recently was a quote that said um none of it made a difference I was alone and a woman and that was all that mattered and that just like hit really hard honestly so there's been like a few of those just kind of like small jabs as I've been reading um like jabs to like mythology and also just like the human experience that I've really enjoyed so far and that one I believe was fairly early in the book yeah um that was uh, actually chapter 15 so about oh, halfway through okay there must have been something similar because i do remember mm -hmm. there were some other comments there are yeah lines. there's some similar ones for sure yeah yeah so yeah, i'm enjoying I'm... it and i do want to finish reading it um and i've actually was able to read quite a bit today because it is pretty fast paced all in all yeah yeah that's the thing when i have time and the focus i get through quite a bit of it it's just you know combining things the two. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Weird how ADHD sometimes doesn't work out in your favor. <laughs> uh, but I mean, I, I really enjoyed it, and I, I think you, know, you made some really great points. You know, that initially, when I was reading it, I was a little concerned because, like the the first relationship that she has, was very friend. <laughs> but I think it was intentionally friend because that's that's a lot of people's first relationship is like wow, I love this person so much. Like, let me do whatever I have to do to be with them, you know? Especially whenever it ends. That's that's tough, you know? 
and she goes to some pretty extreme lengths. Yeah. So it's interesting to me that everybody kind of felt like it was a fast read and that it didn't stick with them. Uh, I think I'm the only one. So I read it back when it came out and then I read it again for this. And I, it really stuck with me more the second time. There was a lot that I picked up uh, that really just, I don't know, like Kayla said, uh, there are those points that are just really poignant that maybe I did kind of breeze through on my first read. And so I felt like a lot of it stuck with me. And I, because I was maybe more familiar with where the story was going to go that time, um, I, I, I got a lot, I feel like, from a second reading of it. I, I will say I, I don't agree about not having stuff stick with me. Like, I, I feel like I've, you know, retained quite a bit, partially because, you know, I was still reading it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there, there is a lot, you know, like the thing and taking notes and things like that. But I, I do think that there's a lot that stood out to me. So. so she kind of, she starts out, she has a rocky relationship with, her family and the gods are very political and she's uh really uh she's not the first child of helios she's uh the second i believe uh or maybe the third no she's, she's the first she's... and then there are the two kids that are better yeah, yeah. that are the the twin or twins or something like that but we never really hear from the boy one except that he was probably not very good to pacify a um are you talking about aetes no the no, other, other one, one. Oh. there are four yeah. kids yeah. and i the just now one. remembered that <laughs> that's probably his name what that they have both no his name it probably just translates to the other one yeah the other one. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah uh, uh, <laughs> no, My I bad. just I thought of something that I'm not gonna say on stream. Per Percy's <laughs> is the brother. Yeah. 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 Um, and the one who's not the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. And so yeah, he's uh, together with Pacify a lot, um, and then she ba uh, Cersei basically raises Aetes. Yeah. Her little brother. Um, yeah. Yeah, who we think that they care for each other a lot, except that not so much. No. Um, yeah. But I want to kind of point out, she has this interaction that is very brief, especially when she's kind of measuring things in thousands of years as a goddess. Um, she has this interaction with um, Perseus very early on in the book, who is being punished in front of like everyone. Prometheus. 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 Yeah. I'm so yeah. sorry. Yes. Prometheus. Come on, man. Uh, yeah. It does. It does make a difference. They're very different. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm just. Yeah. Don't worry. Rick, of... will, Rick will correct us all night. Mm -hmm. It's fine. It'll be great. <laughs> I appreciate fine. that. Not for the insight. It's just to say, mm, actually, <laughs> actually, even better. Yeah. It's Prometheus, not Prometheus. <laughs> <laughs> So she has this uh, interaction where he is being brought in front of all the gods and titans to be punished for his basically being kind to mortals. Um, and he kind of gives her this, like, not all gods have to be the way they are kind of thing. And that really changes her perspective on things. Um and kind of acts as I, w I would say it's kind of a catalyst for her then interactions between gods and mortals. Anybody else feel that? I mean, do, do, did anybody else feel that that was a pretty important moment for her? Oh, yeah. I think oh, it yeah. took a while for it to really come into effect, though. You know, it, it's one of those things that it seems like she learned from it, but then as time went on, she got more out of it. It took a couple thousand years to figure out the lesson. Yeah, at first it was yeah. it was merely 
defying the will of the gods and the titans that that's what yeah. the, that's what she took out of it she's like oh I, I i talked to prometheus i did something i shouldn't have done you know um but yeah i think it definitely colored her, her how she uh, uh reacted to mortals because i think it, if anything even subconsciously it opened her eyes to how petty the gods were and how because that's really when she starts she starts writing more and more about how brainless and mincy the nymphs are and how the gods just kind of sat around and you know harumped and harumped all the time and then she she becomes a lot more um outwardly and antagonistic i guess maybe not towards them specifically but about them yeah. and I, more less going with the flow right like yeah. i will do what i would like to do and not necessarily just sit here quietly yeah um, like society dictates, yeah. Kind of yeah. Thing. Kayla, what were you gonna say? That I think it was very formative for her that moment with Prometheus, yeah. um, and I think it, at least from my perspective, it kind of like opened her eyes to being interested in mortals. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because the gods that whole time were like, "Who gives a shit about mortals?" Basically, yeah. and then she's like, "Well, Prometheus does, and he got in trouble for it, so there must be something there that I should also be interested in." Um, but she references that moment a lot when mm -hmm. she's, like, yeah. being introspective and um, even when she is, like, interacting with mortals, she thinks about Prometheus in that setting. So I think it was, like, a pretty big moment for her, for sure. Yeah. I mean, I would I would argue that in some ways, I don't know if he was more important, but the interactions with Hermes kind mm -hmm. of advanced things. I, I wouldn't say that it was yeah. a bigger deal, but that's when things really started to shift more. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, just, I mean... Put more perspective on that interaction. Yeah. Of, of, of all the gods who trucked with uh, with mortals, Hermes was probably the one who did the most. So it would yeah. make sense that he was kind of the next step down for her from godhood to uh -huh. to to mortals. Yeah. I do also think, though, that without the without the interaction with Perseus, would she have gotten involved with Glaucus? Who is the? Oh, I'm guessing yeah. the the person that you're talking about, Rick, as being the first relationship that is yeah. not good. Mm -hmm. um, totally agree. I think that that um, that relationship very much shows her immaturity and how she continues to yeah. evolve. Um, but I don't think without that interaction, without with with Prometheus, do we get the the relationship with Glaucos, which honestly is another that and the the interactions that follow obviously end with her being exiled. Right. Yeah. I think the nature of the relationship changed after speaking with Prometheus because Gla Glaucos was a was a was a handsome mortal fisherman that she came across. Uh, she fell so madly head over heels in love with him that she I don't remember. She did some juju that turned him into a god. I don't remember what the magic well, was. She gets the, she gets yeah. the moly. Yeah. Um, okay, that's right. That's right. The transformer to flowers. Yes, yes, yes. yes. But, but it uh, is Farmer after Kate. the meeting with Prometheus that she meets him in the first place. Right. right. Yeah. So I, th I think had she just been still stuck in that god mindset, she might have just shagged him on the boat and let that be that. You know, uh, the, the physical dalliances with mortals was not something that was unknown. Um but the fact that she took the time to talk to him and, and get to know him and fall in love with him, I don't think that would have necessarily happened between also, her conversation with Prometheus and just how lonely she was. Just her, yeah. yeah. I don't actually know that on his behalf the relationship was ever romantic with Glaucus. <laughs> it, I think that's left up to interpretation. It seems yeah. like I could see where maybe there was that possibility, but as soon as the, the balance of power shifted, and the relationship changed, that's when we became both literally and figuratively a different person. Well, you, you yeah. also have to wonder how much choice he actually had in the matter initially, you know, because right. she, she was the a god. Yeah, it was the, it was, yeah. it was her divinity might have been, you know, hypnotizing him or whatever the case, though, the whole time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He does say once he's turned god that um, he doesn't see her that way, that he really just sees her as a sister or yeah. just some like other woman, basically. Mm -hmm. In, yeah, in when initially though uh he does say to her like oh goddess that sort of thing mm -hmm. um however like he never at least in the text of the book 
doesn't say anything romantic toward her is yeah. I guess my yeah. point. Does he mm-hmm. ever even call her by her name? I don't I don't think. Uh, he don't just think refers so. to her goddess think, the whole time. Yeah. Not so, until he's a god himself. Until he's a god, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it it's an act of worship maybe as far as he's concerned. Yeah. Well yeah. he's yeah. like terrified of her because That's of true. her father mm-hmm. and then yeah. when he's a god, like you guys said, the power dynamics shift quite mm-hmm. a bit and then he and, just sees her as nothing. So because he looks also, more like a god than she does by that point. Like he, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And he's well, closer and also, to gods. Right. You know, one of the things that often comes up in those like early formative relationships for people is, you know, she was doing things that benefited him, and that mm-hmm. was what he was coming back for the most. Yeah. You know, I think at first it was like fear and that sort of curiosity, but then but there was also started, like he was filling her or she was helping him fill his nets and right, you know right. helping him with uh you know blessings of God blessings basically. Yeah. yeah. I think there's even a point where he came back back angry because mm-hmm. um because she hadn't or like he was their their family wasn't getting uh food and he was beaten by his dad or something. Yeah. And then and, that was whenever she went and got those blessings for yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, cuz he was like I'm done. I'm I'm never coming back here. Mm-hmm. And you know, it, yeah, it does exactly. speak, you know, like I've said a few times to those early not so great relationships that a lot of people have so yeah so and at that point after she uses uh a flower that her brother aetes tells her about which is a flower that only grows where god's blood has spilled uh called moly and uh she changes him into a god he then uh becomes engaged to a nymph named uh now I'm gonna uh Scylla. Scylla. Yeah, yes. Scylla. Yeah. Um and Scylla then she changes her by putting some moly in her bath water it, trying to show her inner well, ugliness. Wasn't it the, the spring? The, yeah, the spring. Like her spring. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. mean like, Basically her she, bath she water, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I only ask because they, they make mention later of, you know, how it didn't affect, like, the fish or anything else mm-hmm. that was in the water, only her. And yes, it, again, you know, kind of skipping ahead, because that's just how I do. Um, but, you know, we talked about how, like, maybe it had to do more with her power than the actual plant itself. You know, yeah, the, the that's, that plant was alluded to. Answering it. Yeah. Well, absolutely. And throughout, she doesn't always have access to it, but is able to change people according to their heart sort of thing, even mm-hmm. without it. So I agree with you that it is not always. But in these early stages, mm-hmm. the only thing she she doesn't know witchcraft. She just knows this flower. Mm-hmm. Um, so she turns Scylla basically into a sea monster. Everybody's fine with that in the gods. They're like, cool, that's that's a thing that happens. Well, and but they even suggest to kill people. They even suggest, or Hermes tells her that Scylla seems to actually be happier um, in this form because she's like mm-hmm. getting all this attention and just like able to gorge herself on travelers and stuff. Well, yeah. and there's, there's a point where uh, it's you know talked about like who could kill Scylla if they needed to because you know she is this horrible monster who was killing people. And it's just nobody but, you know, maybe Zeus or mm-hmm. I think they said Helios might be able to. But yeah. and, and why would they is kind of the thing. Mm-hmm. Is like, yeah, because is... they even said something along the lines of, like, monsters are boons to gods. Right, yeah. because they because people pray. Oh, um, mm-hmm. It brings the prayers to the gods. And so there would be no point of saving the humans. It's, it's all good. Um, Cersei doesn't like this, so she confesses and says, hey... I used witchcraft to do this. And that's when it's a problem, basically, is when her powers rival that. The fact that she could turn somebody into a god and turn a god into a monster, that is the only the issue. Also um, the fear of... Uh, sorry. Also the oh, fear of something new and um, never done before, basically. Like, okay. this has never happened. Right. And also... Uh, basically because of that they tell uh her mother that she can't have any more children with uh with helios, helios because mm-hmm. all of 
their children are sorcerers or witches because of this power that they have. And I did think that was interesting, you know, that even whenever they knew everyone else could do it, she was the only one punished. Yeah. Well, they, I mean, I think Aedes makes a big deal of that. The only reason she got punished was because of her confession, because yeah. she was stepping out of line and basically mm. saying, oh, yeah, it's me. Because everybody else knew that he could do it too, mm -hmm. but he was doing it by mistake. <laughs> to be fair, I mean, Helios could have avoided that because he was very obviously to anyone who's, you know, an outside observer trying to say, like, shut the fuck up. Because oh, yeah. You're, you're saying some stuff that's going to get us in trouble. And she just kept not getting the hint multiple times and... Yeah, that was frustrating as the reader. And like, <laughs> just stop. He's telling you to stop. Yeah, yeah. He's trying yeah. to just tell you to stop. To stop. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it, you know, if he had just been a good dad instead of, you know, a well, he does. God. I would argue that he does protect her in the sense of like making that deal with Zeus because yeah, as much as he out, can, yeah, outright yeah. killed and, all four of them, you know, because mm -hmm. um, he saw them as a threat with oh, all of their power, and it was an unknown. And he's like, well, let's exile her and then he puts her on this like kind of nice island honestly it could have been yeah barren. he definitely sets her up you know so she's not just like there living in the dirt well and they also said that that was very much a, a a message to the gods that even our prisoners are treated like mm -hmm. human queens you know basically mm -hmm. um we we want you to know that even the worst of us is way better than you guys yeah mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless you're um, Titan, because, you know, screw those guys. Um, is Scylla, <laughs> is she an actual mythological yeah. creature? Yeah. yeah. Uh, so Scylla yeah. and Charybdis, they don't, I don't think, talk about Charybdis in the book. They do. Well, they, I mean, they mentioned the, the world, the yeah, maelstrom. But, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, the whirlpool, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, they, they were, like, a big part of uh, the Odyssey because mm. it's one of the obstacles they have to overcome on their journey back. Cersei cool. actually uh, tells... Odysseus how to get to the underworld what he like gives him the stuff that he needs she tells him and warns him about Scylla and how to get around her and that kind of stuff so that is cool. in yeah. the in the Odyssey yeah um sorry I'm looking at my notes um but so at that point she goes hangs out on a beautiful island with a house that has a Clean. replenishing pantry. pantry. Yeah. <laughs> Magic house. <laughs> she I wish. She can, she I can mean, talk it, to animals, and so she's got <laughs> panthers and shit following her around all the time. Yeah, and wolves yeah, yeah. and lions and Wolves and, and, stuff. Boar and stuff, yeah, yeah. Um, so really the first Disney princess is what I'm hearing. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. 100%. <laughs> I mean, and, like, she's lonely, but she also... <clears throat> kind of loves it and gets mm -hmm. to spend time uh learning witchcraft in in like not secretly not just with this one plant but starting to like learn the craft oh. of it um and is uh you know alone and then also we get some visitors to the island uh yep. Early on, Hermes is there a lot. Some sexy visitors, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so she has relations with Hermes. Um, and he basically, neither of them are attached to each other. No. <laughs> no not in the slightest. <laughs> uh, it is more of a relationship of... They're um, friends with benefits. Well, Man. and not even friends. Not even friends. Uh, yeah, until... until... Acquaintances <laughs> with benefits. Yeah. <laughs> he's the only one on the island and, yeah, and she's something new news. and interesting yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. they're, really what it is. they're yeah, acquaintance it's... cousins with benefits <laughs> yeah it's, you know it's greek mythology so they're all related right yeah. yes that's Yikes. true that's true <laughs> yeah uh so he he gives her news of what's going on in the world which is the only way she would know oh. um until the time that uh basically uh a boat shows up and says hey uh, come with us. Your exile is lifted for a little bit, so you can come help your dear sister, <laughs> who she never had a relationship nope. with. 
and they were actually very antagonistic towards each other, um, wants you to come and attend the birth of her child. I do love that, like, there's that very brief moment of, like, oh, you know, I guess she's, like, being nice, and then she immediately is like, no, my sister's a bitch. Why is she doing <laughs> this? This is a trap. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's kind of Cersei's whole thing, though. It's, like, she's really intuitive, like, in the nature of gods and humans, and she, like, learns to see right through people and can, like, yeah. see their intentions and know exactly what they want, but then is still really gullible and goes along with it anyways, even though she knows that something's probably going to happen. And that's, like, a really yeah. good example of it. You know, she knows yeah. her yeah. sister is probably tricking her, and, like, why would she want me to come? But she's just so desperate for that connection that she goes anyways. Well, and also it's a chance to get off the island. Yeah. 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 And I don't think she realized, had she been off the island by that point? I don't think she realized no. she could get off the island. Yeah, yeah. So, well, because she couldn't. Yeah. She couldn't, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, she yeah, does I not. I think she's after, constantly wishing she was wrong about people, yeah. After yeah. that, she doesn't leave the island until her father stops her exile. Mm -hmm. uh, she does do the whole walk to the bottom of the sea, but I don't think that that counts as leaving the island. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, with the rules yeah. there. <laughs> the rules of the sea. <laughs> I it, guess if you're. It's a if, dome, not a bubble. Yeah. International, <laughs> international waters. <laughs> if you're walking on ground, you're not in the sea. <laughs> it's maritime law. Yeah. yeah, I guess so. Um, but so her sister is there, and I mean, whoever wants to. Take take the reins. I feel like I'm talking too much, and I would rather have more people doing I, this part. <laughs> I do think, I mean, unless I just missed some of it, I think it's interesting that they kind of skip over all of the details of how her sister has the Minotaur, because that's she, a really... They oh. tell you. She they tells the story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she tells purposefully it. engages in coitus with the white bull of her father. Yes, she um, does. To make um, her husband mad essentially who we also, find out i don't know if if Perse Persephone or whoever knows this but we find out that all of her father's white bulls are actually also his fa their father's children because he turns into a bull and impregnates the the cows yes. and then they have more bulls i was gonna so, say yeah yeah they, they know that from times. when they're children that they so she talk about that the dad is always having sex with the white bulls she yeah they or white, i'm sorry was, white cows she has an incestuous bestial, bestiality relations with On her purpose. bovine stepbrother. Yeah. But she does yeah. that because she, her husband, she marries Midas, is that right? Yeah, Midas. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, Minos. Minos. Minos, Minos. sorry. Minos. Yeah. Yeah. Again, close Dif names. Different, different <laughs> cursed Greek guy. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I mean, Minos becomes a judge of the underworld after he dies, so he's more blessed than cursed. Because they even, I remember they point that out. Because uh, she's kind of complaining whenever she's told who she's marrying about the fact that it's immortal. And they're like, no, it'll be fine. He'll, you know, be important after he's dead. Oh, great, right, yeah. But dead they, she yeah. is pissed to be married off to a mortal, and this is kind of her revenge. Mm -hmm. uh, she's a total jerk to him the whole time they're married. Oh my god, she curses him for <laughs> cheating on her. Um... I guess I shouldn't go into too many details, but essentially killing women with scorpions and spiders inside of them when he has sex with them. Yeah. I, Every I time. That. And then, like, hundreds of women. He just, like, keeps mm -hmm. doing it. I'm like, yeah. bro. And he, uh, yeah, at some point, <laughs> she's like, you didn't wonder if you were the reason that they <laughs> yeah. were dying. Oh, he, he totally absolutely you know, knew he was the reason. He but knew. He's, He did. He's the king. It, mm -hmm. I mean, if you're king, you get to be Ted Bundy. It's fine. You could be king, yeah. <laughs> he's got people to clean that up. Yeah. 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 Oh. So yeah, she has a uh, a baby that they know is going to be a difficult baby. Uh, she's having trouble. She's been in labor for like ever. They end up having a cesarean section, which is great because Cersei now kind of has some plant knowledge and it has been working on her witchcraft, and so is able to successfully deliver. This baby that ends up being the Minotaur. Um, uh, and I also want to mention that she did have to go by Scylla's straight when yeah, she went she, there. Yeah. She 
tries to change Scylla back, and that doesn't work. Oh. Well, and she disguised herself as her brother. Yes. Yeah. In order to sneak by. Mm -hmm. But also, it was her sister who purposely made them go that route in the first yeah. place, yeah. and both ways, mm -hmm. she because she knew how much she it hurt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Basically, funny to because Scylla eats a half a dozen to a dozen kit guys every time they go through there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I mean, still, is pretty much a, a Lovecraftian monster. It's 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 all tentacles and oh and yeah, and, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The it's, way it's, they describe it's, it's good stuff. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Hanging that's from the how like she Only like hangs on to stalactites her. inside mm -hmm. of her cave so she can it's badass. Yeah, so she can, like droop her body and grab sailors off their boats. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty cool. <laughs> and chomp them. Mm -hmm. If they're fast, she if, if they're fast, they, she gets six. If they're slow, then she gets twelve. Is I think what they say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, um, sometimes Charybdis gets some because you know they're just dumb and they go right into the world. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's which, where the phrase "a rock and a hard place" comes from, though. Yeah. Uh, the the person who did come to get her was Daedalus, the craftsman. Her, fir yeah. her first great love. Yep. Um, Daedalus. Yeah, and he ends up making a a maze for the Minotaur, but also <laughs> Cersei is able to basically curse the Minotaur to only have hunger for... Because he bites off her finger while he's being born. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, the whole entire thing. <laughs> he literally, yeah, he bit the hand that was, was birthing him, yeah. <laughs> And so it's like a, he only gets hungry like once a week, uh, once a once month or something a, like once that. A yeah. year, once, once a, a year, once a year for a season. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. So that they can kind of entrap him in this maze and, and not and... run out of people. Yeah. 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 It's a, it's an interesting thing. Basically, it's... her sister is super stoked that she has the Minotaur because she gets to be the mom of the Minotaur oh, and yeah. achieve all of this, you know, grand. I don't know. Birth of Monsters gives you a lot of clout. Yeah, I guess love so. Monsters. Clout, yeah. 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 Uh, legendary status. <laughs> Street cred, like, man, yeah. I birth monsters, I guess. <laughs> yeah. It, it's a wild uh, situation. But yeah, she, she kind of says... You know, who else was going to come to help? No, Nobody in our family cares about me. And even though we hate each other... You probably hate me the least, or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a pretty big breakthrough moment for them because um, Cersei like finally sees herself like through her sister's eyes and is able to just like understand like how she's been viewed by the family all this time, and it kind of gives her some power because they're able to actually like kind of put it all out and like talk about things a little bit more. And. Yeah, it, it is. It is revealed that, uh, in fact, that the other brother that you know nobody remembers only only hung out with Pacifier because she was sleeping with him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and like now that she's married off, he doesn't care about her. Aedes doesn't care about her. Her father doesn't care about her. And but but at least even though she was a total jerk to send for her, make her go through Scylla Strait. Even with that, Cersei did come to help. So. But, you know, really, for those of us who don't have the best of sibling relationships, it's a little bit relatable being like, you know what? <laughs> we don't like each other, but you hate me at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a reconciliation, but it's an understanding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. But, you know, good for the people who can't relate to that. <laughs> and it's... it's <laughs> And it's more than she gets with any of her other siblings. So yeah, yeah. Which, honestly, to uh, to kind of jump backwards a little bit, the relationship with Aedes is kind of heartbreaking because oh, they're yeah. so mm -hmm. close. She raises him, mm -hmm. and then she thinks they're so it, close. That's the yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Well, but really, he, t he teaches family. her like who she is. You know, he's the one yeah. that tells her that she's a witch. Well, and the, the thing is, like, it, it seems, it, maybe this is just my interpretation of it, it seems like they were really close until he gets old enough that he's just like, nah, screw this, I'm gonna... He grew into his he own gets power. powerful. Yeah. 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 Which, again, you know... He's same just like the Glaucos character. Mm -hmm. See, I, yeah, I felt, I felt it was more he was using her into, because she was the stronger in one yeah. thing. He was yeah. like, she'll protect me until I can protect myself, and then I'm out of here. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. That's and what I kind of got from that. It, yeah. It makes it even more heartbreaking, because they kind of yeah. happen around the same time, so... Mm -hmm. 
because I remember they were, like mentioned that he was a naturally intelligent as a child, like as right. like very small child, he was already able to understand everything, mm-hmm. and he was like, I guess foresight and knowledge was his main thing. So he he used her is what it felt like for the longest time to yeah. get where he wanted to be, and then ditched her. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, at that point, she has a relationship with Daedalus. He gives her a, a nice loom for her to take home. Mm-hmm. Uh, introduces her to his uh, son, Icarus. Um, he's a nice little kid. She likes him <laughs> a lot. And then she has to go home to Ayaya. Um, later yeah. on, just through Hermes, finds out what happens to Icarus, but Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, it was just like a... She had a lot of deep... um, And I wouldn't even say love, but like appreciation. It was an admiration. um, It was a shared admiration. Yeah, uh, Of Daedalus, and Mm -hmm. it was uh, just... She was also lonely, and he was also Also lonely. lonely. (laughs) And I think it was maybe the first time where we see her have genuine, like, nice feelings towards somebody that isn't either, a you know, a jerk to her back. Mm-hmm. So it's a growth. Uh, well, because... I think I think Daedalus was the first person who actually liked her for herself. I think that was the yeah. whole idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 He was really the first who who saw what she was capable of and respected her abilities and mm-hmm. and and was excited to share what he knew. So yeah, I mean, it was yep. it's. After being alive for three thousand years, to finally have someone even get a glimpse of you, yeah, well, well, why wouldn't you develop some sort of feelings for him? Yeah, absolutely. And it sucks because Helios initially seemed like he cared a lot, and then you know had these other kids, and then she really wasn't that interested in anymore. And that I think has to do with a lot of her. Like, they make a big deal about how she has a mortal's voice, and so the gods hate the way she sounds and uh, think that she is... Ugly. uh, Ugly, yeah. Her eyes. Mm -hmm. Her eyes are too yellow. Her Mm -hmm. Her skin's not gold enough. Yeah. Yeah, because she doesn't have the same powers that the rest of her family does. Cersei means hawk, right? Like Mm Because she looks like a bird. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah, that's what Um, goes back to Ayaya, keeps practicing uh, witchcraft. At some point, the gods decide that this, that Ayaya is basically the place where we should send our wayward daughters to, yeah. because this is our punishment <laughs> island. And she gets real pissed about that. <laughs> that she's, they get, they start sending all these nymphs to her to like rehabilitate them. <laughs> It is a, yeah, to I mean, be, it is, but to it's be her handmaids, and she's like, get much. out of here. I actually, I wanted to step back a little bit and talk about her going to the island. Um, because when I was reading that, I thought it was just like really interesting to see her kind of like accept her power. You know, she's obviously like a little mm-hmm. forlorn about being exiled on this island all alone, and then she kind of like shapes the island into what she needs it to be. Um, and starts just, like, learning how powerful she is and discovers, like, her own brand of witchcraft. Um, And And that mostly happens after she gets back from the the Minotaur journey. From Minos. See, I think, yeah, and I think... It starts a little before that, though. Yeah. Because by the time she goes to visit her sister, she already knows that she's more more powerful than her because she's been practicing so much. That's true. That that first ship, the the ship where the people, you know, essayed her... uh, I mean, it was then that she turned all of them into pigs and killed them. That doesn't that was... happen, though, until after the trip for, from... For the uh, Minotaur? Yeah, the yeah. Minotaur's yeah. first. Yeah, she... But even yeah, before Minotaur that, she's already, like, discovered her power because she's been on the island for so long. Yeah, the, guy, the, she, the guys from her sister with... were the first sailors who, who yeah. Yeah. Land, landed on the island. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It yeah. kind of starts with the whole, like, taming of her lion, who mm-hmm. means a lot to her. Um, and that's when, which is before the Minotaur visit. And once she tames the lion and has this like companionship with somebody who is, you know, whether it's a pet or not, it is a actual like loving relationship that she has. And that kind of encourages her to make Ayaya a home. Mm -hmm. 
And I didn't even think of it as like, I mean, yeah, she's lonely, but I kind of saw it as like her accepting that mm -hmm. and just kind of like throwing herself into her work and like seeing how powerful she could be and just like taking enjoyment in all of the things that the island could offer her. Um, yeah, because... And so I think that's why she's so pissed when all of those like nymphs start showing up because yeah, it had been they're, they're, like the home in her that territory. she had made. Yeah, exactly. yeah, exactly. But I just really liked her talking about that like the first time she realizes that it's possible for her. She just says like she made so many mistakes with her spells and her potions. Um, and then she learns to have like intention with her magic. And mm -hmm. I think that's like a very like specific thing that she realized to make her really powerful. And I think I think it's 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 important to note or or to keep in mind or think about maybe um while you know while she's she's learning her her power and becoming you know really the god of that island um she'll flash back to her time with Daedalus or she'll mention how how well crafted his loom was and I think she learned control and creativity to some extent from Daedalus who was also exiled also a prisoner also was able to make amazing things with his hands you know he was uh, was an absolute genius um so i think that was kind of the first time she learned i can learn from a mortal and if i take that lesson from what the mortal mm -hmm. can teach me combine it with my godhood then mm -hmm. then she gains mastery over that island and she gains she starts to gain mastery over yeah and i think just in yeah. general like her learning that mortals have a lot to offer exactly other than yeah. what the gods have been telling her her whole life and she starts to really like focus in on that um, I think she learns a lot more. And the fact that he, you know, Daedalus created, creates more in, in his 60 odd years of human life than the gods, most of the gods and nymphs mm -hmm. that she grew up with did in thousands and thousands of years. Yeah. And he right. becomes a legend. And like, I think it's um, Odysseus when he visits her, that's like, oh yeah, I've heard of Daedalus. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was more important to me than Achilles or any other warrior. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's really interesting. Especially considering... Odysseus literally knew Achilles. Mm -hmm. Like, they fought in the Trojan War together. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, impressed. he was just a guy <laughs> to him because they yeah. knew each other. He wasn't a legend uh, because he literally know, knew him. Like, you can't... Yeah. There's there's not a celebrity when you actually know somebody. It's yeah. no matter how... Well, but he does say that he would never take on Achilles in combat. He knew better than that, but yeah. Right, but at the time, like, Achilles is dead. So, mm -hmm. like, when he gets to Aiaia, so, uh, so yeah, at, at some point, Hermes, uh, during his, you know, dalliances to the island, says, like, I heard a prophecy about you and your island that some great hero named Odysseus is going to come at some mm -hmm. point. Um, and then much, so that was way earlier on yeah and then and, and then they fool around and he disappears for a few centuries and that's yeah. kind of how the relationship goes and yeah. then odysseus shows up and she tells him oh yeah i heard a prophecy oh, yeah. about you and mm -hmm. he's like what is yeah. it she's like that you come here he's like that's the stupidest prophecy i've ever heard and she's like right, yeah yeah, yeah yep. it is <laughs> <laughs> agreed doesn't have to be good it's I just true that. yep yep yeah um but yeah so uh eventually those people start coming to the island well, she starts um, whipping the nymphs into shape, too, which I think was great. Yeah, that like, that yeah, as well. Yeah. It's pretty entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> um, but she, because of her loneliness, kind of starts... The first people who come, she is kind to them. She uh, opens her home to them. She invites them for food. She serves them. She sends the nymphs away because basically she's like, I'm showing them my hospitality. And then they take advantage of that. And... They, she realizes that they called her a goddess, but they didn't actually think she was a goddess because of her humanness. And so they uh, sexually assault her. Uh, she had at least foreknowledge that something might have happened, or she wanted to be protected in case something did happen. So uh, at the first opportunity after that has happened, she turns them into pigs. And then slaughters them. And, slaughters mm -hmm. them. <laughs> and then continues to do that with every boat that lands in the island for next century or so. But yeah. only yeah. if she can tell that they have bad intentions. Right. She frees the men that are actually kind to her. Yes. Yeah. But it's the pigs comes first. Yeah, it's like boom. Yeah, without a, without a, a hesitation. Fuck yeah. 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 It was awesome. The... Well, can't blame her, of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So they ba she basically gives everybody the the wine that will turn them into pigs 
and whether or not she turns them to pigs is based on entirely their actions. Mm -hmm. Um, So in, in the Odyssey, I think that no, there's nothing like it's all, she just gives, she makes everybody pigs and there's yeah. no reasoning. There's, there's no morality yeah. behind it. Yeah. It's of just, course. that's what she does. Cause she's a witch. Yeah. 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 Um, so this gives her it was definitely... written by a man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but this definitely gives her agency and, uh, that is lacking a lot for, especially for a kind of a secondary character in somebody mm-hmm. else's story. This is the first, um, this is the I don't know that there are any other Cersei like from her perspective books. I don't know oh, if that's uh, true. There are but... a couple I mean there are a couple. Um Okay. Margaret Atwood wrote oh my gosh, I can't think of the name of it. But it's 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 basically a retelling of Cersei's story. Oh, oh shit, I gotta yeah, read yeah. that. That sounds incredible. Yeah. I, I can't love think Margaret of the name Atwood. I can't think of the name of it off the top of my head, but yeah. It's... Damn. Gotta read it. Find it and tell me. Well, and we'll see if I can that, dig it that up, just yeah. goes to show you that I'm not super up on my myth retellings, but um, like in those stories, there, there, there is no act, like it is all from somebody else's perspective. Mm-hmm. So when we get these retellings from her perspective, this is all, you know, new because it is not in the stories themselves. Right. So, right. Yeah. can I? I which, Go yeah, ahead. go ahead, Alana. Uh, I also like how in this story itself, she mentions that, oh, this person probably colored me in a negative light. And those are the stories that are going to be told about me. They yeah. actually acknowledge it. It's kind of mm-hmm. a neat little way of putting a twist on it. Yeah. Or even like she says that she hears about the the song about um, her and Odysseus like 6,000 years after they first meet and how it's all about him charming and taming her and like, you know, how making him out to be the hero and all this stuff. I, I yeah. like that too. I think that's all really interesting. But by the same token, she meets her niece Medea at one point, who was another evil witch from, mm-hmm. from the Greek myths and, and her, and she's like, Oh yeah, this chick's evil. Like she, she, mm-hmm. she looks at Medea the same way that, that, you know, other characters would look at, at her or, or, or history painted her. So well, but like everybody else, she gives her a chance. You know, yeah. she yeah, at true. first yeah. assumes she that she's yeah. not evil and mm-hmm. gives her a chance and then learns that she yeah. is. But yeah, anyways. Yeah. And I don't even know that she thinks that Medea... I think she thinks Medea is making bad choices. Yeah, that's yeah. more like what she... Okay, I guess, yeah. I, guess, yeah. I don't I don't feel like Medea was painted as evil. I think that we know that her father is a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> and she wanted to get away from that and the way she did it i think she saw a lot of herself in that oh first absolutely this yeah. uh relationship with medea like she yeah. knows that jason's and Jason, gonna yeah, be yeah. a yeah. jerk right <laughs> and he ends but up he's also being, gonna be a hero yeah yeah and and so she tries to like give her an out and she doesn't want it and she's like well you know i didn't want it either at that time mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. kind of thing that's fair mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, I am trying to think of where we're at in the story. Yeah, Odysseus gets there. He she turns his men into pigs. Uh, he says, "Hey, could you not turn my men into pigs?" <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, "Sure." I mean, honestly, like there's a whole thing in the myth where he like basically like comes to her at knife point or sword point, and she's like, "Well, basically, let's let's." Ha- get busy instead um in the book it's uh much nicer that it is not as like knife pointy (laughs) right yeah there's a little bit of conversation he draws his sword and she sees that he could probably kill her and so she's like what if instead we just went to my room yeah. yeah and and the thing is is that hermes did in the in the odyssey give him the the Molly so that he wouldn't be affected mm-hmm. but he also tells her that he's not going to be affected like it's it's a weird trickster situation so yeah. like she has some knowledge but yeah it's a little bit it's a little iffy well, he little makes dicey. her he makes her promise um on i don't quite remember the details on something about going 
into the underworld, um, that she won't try and kill him if he gets rid of the bully. Yeah. And he uh, showed interest in her stuff and her abilities too. In that, yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. Yeah. That's yeah. true. Yeah. yeah. So they have a relationship for about a year. He keeps saying, "Oh, I'm about to go," and actually, I don't until his men get real cranky and they're like, "Hey, by the way, it's the Midwest goodbye taken to the extreme." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Greeks invented it. We just didn't know it. <laughs> uh. Uh, like this just came from the Midwest of Greece. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's he's definitely oh, leaving just just next just season. Any minute now. The whole, yeah. It's too cold. I gotta yeah, we'll my stay. Boat, we got we should stay. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm sure, as we're like, that's great for you. You're you're banging the goddess. We're just yeah stuck here with the sheep. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they uh, get fr- they get free food and lodging yeah. for a whole true. year. Free endless food, <laughs> and, and there are probably some nymphs still running around at that point too. So. Oh, they definitely it say that, <laughs> yeah, it, that yeah. his men are uh, having all the relations with mm-hmm. the nymphs, and mm-hmm. she sees it as a merging of their households. <laughs> um, I know. I was like, "Oh, honey." <laughs> I mean, things were merging. Yeah. <laughs> um, it is. It yeah. Their relationship is obviously. Um, she has really realistic expectations of it. She knows he's going. He talks about loving his wife. Uh, she is attached to him in a more romantic sense than maybe ever before. But also the relationship is not without issues. Mm-hmm. Like he gets angry. He sometimes like beats up his men. <laughs> Just, but you he, know. But then he changes. She changes him and makes him a better man. Does no. she? <laughs> so she thinks. <laughs> uh, the thing, so the thing is, is that I feel like maybe Kayla hasn't finished the book. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like just like the, the perception that they're yeah, holding, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And she even says like his, um, like his anger has like gone down a little bit he's like in a better mood you know he's like more willing to give her gifts and help around the house and things like that can't imagine why (laughs) it's like he's love bombing her or something yeah Yeah. it's It's... it's definitely not a cycle of abuse or anything no no not at all I don't think I I mean honestly it's it's not a great relationship but but they're both aware that it's temporary um, which you know doesn't excuse it, but like, doesn't excuse know, anything. But aware. but it doesn't it doesn't lend it doesn't make it easier to to want to hold on to attachments at the same time. You know, yeah. I'm not I'm not excusing it at all. It's terrible. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. And it is a large portion of the book. I feel like we're it's it because it is such a long time. Like the book. Uh, is not that long, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on. So he's there for a whole year, um, and then he basically is sent on a quest to the underworld. She tells him all the things on how to do it and how to get past Scylla, and then she sends him. He comes back for a day or two, and then goes on his way. Um, and right about that time, she knows she's pregnant, but does not tell him because she. Uh, doesn't want to basically keep him anymore. Like, he needs to go. Although he ends up not making it back for at Another least... Another seven or eight years. Yeah. yeah <laughs> at least a few more years. Well, he gets uh, he gets straight up kidnapped by, by another, by a sea nymph named Calypso, who yeah. the gods have to beg her to let him go after like 10 years. Yeah. 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 So it's a... But by the time he gets home... He's nuts. Yeah, he's gone crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, however, during this time now, uh, she's pregnant. She says, uh, "Nymphs, no more. Like, go home. I'm not. I'm not dealing with this anymore." And she has a baby, and she gets to raise a kid, and um, is doing. <laughs> Eight. <laughs> what? Well, <laughs> like it's it's rough. It's like, realistic, yeah. yeah. Single I mean, mother, yeah. yeah. Are you kidding? Yeah, yeah. I mean, then, here's the thing: is as a parent, uh, 
it is a hard adjustment to mm -hmm. to be a parent. Yes. And to also do that completely alone. Yeah. Not just yeah, single literally parents. Yeah, exactly. but there's yeah, yeah. no one else on the <laughs> no island. No one. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. Uh, she talks about how tired she is. It is I mm -hmm. felt like I I felt it. Like I know. I, I felt it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And you, you know, like, but there's also just so much love for the child that, like, she wants this so much and she's so glad to have him at the same time, which is, again, super relatable that it can be very soul sucking and still bring you the most joy. <laughs> uh, somebody told me once, um, once you have kids, you'll never be happy again. But you'll always be joyous, or you'll always you'll never feel happiness, but you'll feel joy. Or something I think like that, that that's a book. I think that, that might be like, a book. Yeah. 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 Uh, Yikes. No. But... I mean, Phil and I will read half of it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll get the loss of happiness part, but you'll never get to the joy again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is a hard season for her mm -hmm. for a while, and then even then, like she knows somebody is trying to kill him. Mm -hmm. uh, very very early on in his life uh like animals are said to bite him and they're th like things keep happening that are unlike the island so uh she has to make a basically a spell that protects the island from anyone being able to find it um which she's had the power to do this whole time and she's just chosen not to yeah well because she was I feel like it was because she was so lonely, but yeah, now she that she has something to world. protect, yeah. 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 Um, yeah, that's that's the important part. Because I mean, how's she gonna hook up with like Hermes and random sailors if mm -hmm. people can't find it? Exactly. <laughs> well, and it, by this time, she told Hermes to skedaddle. She didn't want right. to see you right. anymore. You're just causing trouble. Like, get out. She actually, I think, did that a little bit before before Odysseus, Odysseus gets there. Odysseus yeah. came. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. because he, I mean, he's a trickster, like that was his role in it. And he's like, sure, whatever. Except that he was like, kind of like hanging around and laughing sometimes, mm -hmm. but not actually coming to her. Yeah. Yeah. He was just, he was just doing all the nymphs instead. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's right. Yeah. 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 He would also just show up and do the nymphs. Yeah. The nymphs yeah. Would... Mm -hmm. Come back with yeah. rosy cheeks or <laughs> yeah, something. Yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> I was gonna be like, how do I say this nicely? <laughs> they come back with a a glow, a glow about them. <laughs> She's like, I know that glow real well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, uh, she does remind me if anybody remembers, she has an idea that Athena is behind the murders and i don't remember the, the attempted how. murder yeah uh, or yeah the attempted murder of telegonus who is her son oh, right she looks into is that the pool part i think she, she looks into the pool dead? and sees yeah yeah she she scries for it yeah. yeah yeah i believe that's what happened she like goes to a pool in a cave and basically does witchcraft in it and then finds out like she basically because her father is also helios could um predict the future she tries her hand at it and discovers she can do it it was her mother who could see oh, the future right. um right. Okay. but yes mother. <laughs> and something about it at some point she knows like if if telegonus lives you'll regret it kind of thing is what she's told that telegonus will kill his father yeah yeah she i don't know that she knows that she didn't, yeah she didn't know that part yeah. she didn't know that part oh okay it but that's why but that's why i regret it because Athena comes at yeah, one point. Straight up comes an and says, Hey I've been trying yeah, to kill your son. I've been trying to kill your son. Just and let me you do it. would yeah. prefer that over yeah. what's gonna happen. Or Trust yeah. me in the long run, you're gonna want that to happen. Yeah, if I yeah. if I remember correctly from, you know, my review of the myths, I think in the myth she knew that he was like destined to kill Odysseus. I could be wrong on that, but I'm pretty But sure. even then like yeah. there is no world in which a mother says, "Okay, let me just sacrifice me my just child." You... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even if I loved the the father so much, like there's no world, <laughs> not a one. Um, 
And Where, that's what leads her to go get the, the Manta spear. The Manta right, spear. Right, because right. At, at 16 or so, he really wants to go see his father. Yeah. He wants yeah. to get off the island. So she gives Trigon, right? Is that his name? Try, try something? Oh, the Manta Ray, yeah. Uh, he's the god of the sea or something, yeah, yeah. some titan. And he says, I'll give you this if you will be in pain for eternity, basically, if you let me sting you with it. And she's like, okay, if my son will be safe, I'll get stung and be pa- in pain for eternity. And he's like, oh, yeah, here, I just say that to everybody. And, like, <laughs> nobody's taking me up on it. So, yep. like, here you go. <laughs> Psych. Yeah. Just knowing that you're willing just to do it. Just when you're done yeah, with yeah, it, it's one of those throw it into the ocean so I can have it back, basically. But yes, she walks on the bottom of the sea so that she's not <laughs> leaving the island <laughs> to do this. Um, and and then he uh, takes off. He goes and goes to wherever the island is where Odysseus is now a crazy Ithaca. man. Ithaca? Yeah, yeah Ithaca. He's got serious PTSD. Yeah, yeah. and it, it has yes. it has destroyed I mean, him. Ten years. Yeah. Oh sure, a trip. Well, to trip taken paranoia. Ten years fighting the Trojan Monsters. War, and then yeah. another ten years on. Yeah. yeah, lost at sea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Basically, expect things to come at you, and if they aren't, something's wrong. <laughs> it was. I mean, it, I was getting Hurt Locker flashbacks. It was like when he's in the, you know, just Jeremy Renner's in the grocery store, just freaking out at the mm-hmm. the cash registers going off. You know, yeah. It's, and basically, it's not intentional. He, like, kind of comes at him, and he's like, stay back. I have this weapon that's, like, gonna kill people. Um, and he is crazy. And uh, Telemachus, who is Odysseus's son with uh, Penelope, is, like, trying to come and trying to help because he knows his dad's crazy. Um and uh, is not able to, and he gets killed by the the manta ray thing. Yeah, Odysseus does that. Yeah, yeah. Cersei's yeah. son is holding it, and, and yeah, it really is. It's it's he's but, like, where are you? Who are you on my island? And he's like, I'm your son. Oh, stay back, stay back. I got this super poisonous spear, and then he just <laughs> kind of impales himself on it a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Wait, he actually just scratches himself. Just scratches barely. him. Yeah, yeah. It's just it's just very barely. it's a very light. Yeah, Grace, but that's all it took. Yeah. Yeah. And now Athena is double super pissed off. And so Tele- yeah. Telemachus, Telegonus, and Penelope mm-hmm. run back to Aiaia yeah. to basically be like, can you protect everybody? <laughs> <laughs> because Athena wants Telemachus to like take over his father's mantle. He and he's was, yeah. like, but he doesn't Odysseus have was her, her favorite. He was her scion, yeah. And at the and that time he was first of the Greeks too. So like they need he was the Greek. So Athena needed someone to. She basically yeah. wants uh, Telemachus to like start a new nation, kind mm-hmm. of be like this big old, you know, thing. So she sends all of these messengers to Aiaia to say, "Hey, put down your like put down your wards so that I can come in here and talk to Telemachus." And she's like, yeah, I can do that in three days, but everybody get your story straight. You know, know what you're going to want to say to her, basically. I mean, Athena is kind of like the cop of the gods, so that checks Yeah, out. yeah, you, here comes the judge, <laughs> very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know how much I hated Athena until I've read a couple of myth <laughs> retellings, and she's always awful. <laughs> I always liked Athena. Like she's uh, less awful yeah. than a lot of the other gods. Yeah, because oh, she's man. a That's, That's the scary yeah. part. <laughs> but that is the That's... scary part because because her her maliciousness is grounded in in, in reason. Yeah, like yeah. it's yeah. But not always. But not like always. I read, yeah. uh, I recently read Stone Blind, which is a Medusa retelling that came out earlier this year. She is an asshole in that one, and I feel like that one is more. Uh, I actually thought that that after reading it, I downgraded my, after reading this again, I downgraded my rating of that one because it's so much, everything just happens to the women in the story, Mm. including that because the men are mad at them, that the other women punish them Mm. again and again. And there's no agency. Whereas I felt like this book 
was able to give story to people and was able to give agency to women in a way that I mean, may not have been realistic at the time, but for a modern reader, I really need in my story. <laughs> well, once she was able to get, once she was exiled, that's when she was able to, to yeah. because there was a fair amount of, of, you know, the other, the other nymphs, the other women playing each other off of each other for the, for the, the gods Absolutely. politics. Yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. It was a, one thing I would like to comment on that. I mean, this is not my original thought. I, I read it, I think in possibly the spark notes, but somebody had, mentioned that she has a lot of like modern kind of ideas but doesn't talk like someone in modern times she still kind of has that greek mindset you know of like well this is just how it is but like yeah. i'm gonna make the best of it in yeah. my own way so it's kind of that that like between the mortal and the divine and also mm -hmm. between the modern and the ancient you know that she kind of fits somewhere in there in her own space which honestly no. is kind of a role that that women are cast in as witches, right? Mm -hmm. If yeah. you're a witch, you are somebody who does not fit in with the society that you we have. You are outside the patriarchy, yeah. And yeah. over and over again, how do we control these witches is, you know, by casting them out, by burning them. Uh, and, and she's a very early uh, example of that trope. Or, the, you know, fun fact, by calling them hags. And making them evil. <laughs> yeah. Shout out the, to the lovely trolls. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the interesting thing, though, is when uh, at the time of, of of the Iliad and the Odyssey being written, Odysseus was considered very outside the norm hero because he was more about his cunning and his cleverness and his intelligence, and that was and not, not his brute strength. And not his brute strength, and that was not the norm for heroes of the day, too. So. A modern hero in that aspect at his time, yeah. So, so, and really, he's like possibly one of, if not the least problematic ancient Greek hero. Um, oh, of the ancient Greek heroes, yes, yes. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> he, you, yeah you are comparing are... apples to rotten, rotten apples, but yes, yeah, yeah absolutely, yeah. But... yeah. <laughs> no, he's definitely not. There's so much worse. Yeah, yeah. and that, I mean that's unfortunately kind of the fact with all of greek mythology is you have to pick the one who's the least horrible mm -hmm. <laughs> but i really think that a lot of these myths it's like the last few democratic uh primaries really yeah. it's like yeah. any yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. Most of the time. any democrat candidate you're just yeah. like i wish we had more choices mm -hmm. but we don't i guess we'll go with this guy <laughs> this is what we got okay <laughs> but yeah i mean i like that as horrible as the myths were in a lot of ways they were also showing that the gods are like the humans in a yeah, lot of ways they're just fickle they're with jealous way more they're, power yeah. Yeah. and, and yeah. petty Scary af power. like mm -hmm. just jerks basically yeah. yeah yeah i mean they're they're a very good demonstration of the uh the power corrupting trope yeah. Abs absolutely yeah um Eventually, Athena comes to the island to have this talk with Telemachus. He says, I don't want anything to do with you. Uh, and then she straight away turns blows to blows everybody's mind. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, buddy. <laughs> I'm going to be your king. <laughs> and and so uh, Circe is then has to let him go, basically be Athena's progeny. Mm -hmm. Um but Telemachus and Penelope stay with her. Uh, Penelope learns to be uh, do her own witchcraft, and uh, eventually, she and Tele Telemachus uh, get together and is finally the the healthy relationship. Cersei and Telemachus. Cersei and Telemachus. Yeah, yeah. Not Penelope. Yeah, yeah. Penelope stays and becomes the next witch of the island. Yeah. yeah. This, yeah. Is yeah. Not, this is not Oedipus times two. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Although in the myth, it's kind of, kind of messed up the way that like they they just swap moms. Oh yeah. yeah. Kinda. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's already kind of icky because like yeah. she was with his dad. Dad and, she's and like, yeah, hey. yeah now she's with him. Yeah. yeah. And his half brother. Yeah. He has a yeah. half brother with. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the um, thing about yeah, but the thing about Telemachus is that he is. He's just a good dude. Like there's he's 
He he's not the great hero that Odysseus was. He's not the the the, the genius inventor that Daedalus was. You know, he's 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 a smidge divine just because I think they're they're they come their line comes from Hermes, I believe. But yeah. he's just a good guy, and like that's and at the end of the day, that's you know, it's something real. It's something honest. Yeah, there's no there's no magic behind it i guess yeah yeah she yells to her dad's like just yells at the sun one day and he like comes and she's like basically you need to end my exile or else i'm gonna tell zeus that i talked to to, uh, to prometheus Pr yeah. prometheus <laughs> all those years ago and you're gonna get in trouble for it it's a wild conversation and it's like ten thousand years ago, you yeah. know. It's at this <laughs> point, yeah, yeah. But you know, to the gods, that's, that's right, nothing. right. It's a, Nothing. it's an eye blank, but it was. And they also, never forget. When talking about Zeus, one of True. the most petty gods. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Guy can hold a grudge. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he, so he, he and Hera were like right there. Oh, but just, for yeah, sure. they deserved each other a whole bunch. And Athena <laughs> popped out of his head, so mm -hmm. there's yeah. no explanation. <laughs> Fully formed. Yep. Um. She was the favorite. So he, she and. Uh, Telemachus, once her uh, exile is over, they go and uh, basically hunt Scylla and take care of that. Um, it is a, a real dangerous thing. She takes the Trigon uh, spear and turns her into stone. Um, but then they decide that they want to be together and she also decides something else, which Alana, uh, Alana said earlier. And so I want to give you the time to explain, like, kind of the ending, because you said that that really stuck out to you. Sorry? I'm sorry. I missed oh, that. <laughs> that. I felt like that, that what you were talking about was her choice to, like, take the moly and decide what her fate was. Was that? Uh, was, oh, was that oh, you? yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes. Okay, I, I, I don't remember I, I, what I talking could about be that. Crazy. <laughs> oh yeah, the ability to actually um, choose is the big part. Like choosing between immortality and mortality, and becoming the mortal, so she can experience life genuinely and um, experience things for the first time. I thought that was a really important part, and like the a really good message in the end is like it's not worth it to be an immortal if all you're doing is staring down at all the people below and deciding their fate without actually experiencing it basically also kind of nice because it's like the opposite of most of the myths you know most of the myths yeah they elevate these mortals to mm -hmm. you know godhood mm -hmm. or it, like yeah. demigodhood mm -hmm. and this is a nice example of the opposite of that yeah. I also thought it was pretty important. She does mention this, but like, had she stayed immortal, she had a mortal child. Yeah. Yes. Uh, she was going to have to outlive him and see, you know, see him just being played by Athena and then he would die. And I think uh, that, at least for me as a mom, that would have played heavily into my decision. Um, I felt like uh, that would be a real not a great play you know not a great idea to have to go through yeah and she also gets to experience life with him because if she was still exiled on the island she wouldn't be able to see him ever again mm -hmm. it was right. like complete cut off at that point and that's what she thought at that point before making being able to make this decision and go out on her own adventure which is to live a normal life um yeah it was like important that she does get to see her son again because otherwise she wouldn't absolutely and and gets to then grow old and have a real relationship that isn't with telemachus that isn't unequal which mm -hmm. i feel like yes. in different ways all of her relationships have never been on equal footing right, right and that was something she wanted was a real uh connection with a person where because whether or not she held, like, in all of these relationships, whether or not she was a god with a mortal or a mortal with god, like, it was always unequal. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, and it never worked out well. So, yeah. like, you could say she was looking for even footing. Oh, yeah. Oh! oh damn. 
<laughs> you he left said me the that name. You. He said the name. <laughs> so, Cersei, I mean, would um, Aaron, would you recommend? I would recommend it. I really liked it. I, uh, I honestly, like, so also this year I had read Song of Achilles. Oh, yeah, I think it's the better that. book. Yeah. Uh, I, this one is less emotional, mm -hmm. I think. Uh, but I really liked it. And I'm sorry, my computer is going nuts. <laughs> um, I really liked it. And I felt less gutted <laughs> by the end of this book. And sometimes you need that. Mm -hmm. I, uh, yeah, like, this one ultimately has a happy ending. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I feel like some people, from what I saw online, some people are like, I don't know if this is a happy ending. And I was like, I guess because she decides to be mortal. But like, I didn't see it that way. I saw yeah. that it's the happy ending. Yeah, um, she got to choose. And that's, yeah. that's all she's ever really wanted. Yeah, it was to be the in control of her own destiny. Yeah, agreed. I yeah, I did not see that at all as a unkindness. I felt like that was absolutely what <laughs> she she wanted and was the best thing for her but uh not everybody felt that way but yeah I, I liked song of achilles but it was an emotional gut punch song of achilles <laughs> is the story of achilles and patrocles who was yeah. totally not his boyfriend in the in the they were Iliad, roommates but he or, absolutely or was. they were roommates movie. for a long time or in the yeah. movie they were cousins right right <laughs> <laughs> right there was uh, they were doing it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were doing it. Um, but I mean, every soldier the in the Greek Greeks, army was doing like, it with each other. Say, like that was just what is, they did. Yeah, and, this yeah, is but definitely yeah. not a. This is our imposed uh, Western, uh, you know, new. It's a. It's a. Morality. It's a really heartbreaking love story, though, and I think yeah. it's the much better book. But yeah, this is the much easier to digest book. Yeah. But they're both by the same author. That's the they're both yeah. by Madeline Miller. Yeah. I, but I absolutely would recommend it. I yeah. think it's a fun read. Uh, I think that um, obviously, and like I knew about Achilles' story beforehand, whereas mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about Cersei. So that was also a different experience. Is that this is my first real introduction to the character of Cersei, whereas. That one I had preconceived notions, which is also nice sometimes if you know less about it going into it. So, yeah. well, I think that's also the nice thing with a with a with a, a small side character, you know, like this is the the author has so much room to kind of you know create the the the, the new mythology. Yeah. yeah. What about you, Alana? Oh, I would recommend it too. Um, I think it's a really good read, just so you can get some a different perspective on immortality and mortality i believe um because you know there's always stories about the want to be immortal but skipping over the horrible p aspects of it so i love that they put it into perspective oh. and you get to see how horrible it can actually be <laughs> what about you jason i liked it um and yeah i think it, it, it would be a good beach read i would definitely recommend it to people for that but if you wanted to read a, a, a kind of modern retelling of a Greek legend, I'd go Song of Achilles over over this one. I agree that 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 one is. I mean, I think that if you are wanting something lighter, yes, this is maybe then, the but, place but, to start. Right. Um, whereas that one is just just so it's very sad in places or if you I, want i would i would also recommend this one if, if if anyone's has or hasn't read it the silent of the girls it's a it's a retelling of the last days of the trojan war oh. um from the uh the viewpoint of some of the camp slaves um of the greek and, and trojan slaves who were kidnapped and so it's um it's more historical drama but i it it's another good one. If you like this time period, if you're interested in sort of modern retellings of stuff, that's a, Pat Barker's Silence of the Girls is one to check out. Um, I would emphatically not recommend Stone Blind. I didn't, <laughs> didn't care for it. There you go. I um, will say, I, having this discussion, I'm really glad that uh, my decision to choose this book over Song of Achilles, because that was actually the one I wanted to choose. I just didn't own it, and I was broke. 
So I was like, you know what? I already own Cersei. We'll just be that. There you one. go. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it's probably good we didn't do two super bummers of a book in a yeah. row. So <laughs> I agree. I agree. Although, I this was a good palate cleanser following. after peace, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so next month. We are going to be reading Howl's Moving Castle, oh, which is right. also a happy book. Yay! Yeah. 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 Uh, I think that we're all, or at least Elena and I talked about, uh, I'm going to also try and rewatch the movie. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, kind of to, to compare and contrast that. Um, Kayla, so of course, you're welcome to, mm -hmm. to participate again if you'd like. Uh, and then, you know, if we don't read the whole thing, we just can watch the movie. Yeah, yeah. I've seen the movie a bunch, so I'm ahead of the game there. a little there. different. Yeah. No, it's... absolutely. I actually, so a lot of people uh, have seen the movie uh, a I lot. I know, it's a book, yeah. yeah. Uh, and uh, I read the book first, and so the movie to me is the, the, the weird one, whereas mm. everybody else it's the other way. Uh, so it's an interesting one to talk about, uh, and I'm excited for that. So please join us. And if you want to talk about it beforehand, join our Discord. We're in there making crazy playlists, doing <laughs> nonsense all the time, uh, talking about sad political states of the world. Also, I don't poop know. Jokes. Poop jokes. Always poop all jokes. the poop jokes. <laughs> I don't know what else are we doing in uh, even putting games Discord. Uh, Jack Jason? Black Seder pictures. Yes. Oh right, yes. <laughs> that those were me. That, that a was frequent occurrence. <laughs> Excellent. A frequent we, one. We are friendly nerds talking friendly nerd stuff. Yeah. Yes, and uh, we of course make a, a game called Babies and Broadswords, and uh, you can check out that we have a podcast where we play TTRPGs. Although this is going to soon be a different podcast. Uh, where we're doing this and some other scripted projects in the future. So thank you so much for joining us. You can uh, find us on all the socials at Even Fitting Games. And if you send us a DM, we'll definitely get you a link to our Discord. Let, you know, let us know that you want to come be friends. We'll and if there. you've got a book recommendation for us to read, let us know. Yeah, we'd, we'd love to, to talk about your book on the podcast unless it's like peace and then you can just, <laughs> just keep you know, <laughs> jason will probably still read it i mean he'll read anything at this point guys i'm happy that i read peace and Thank you. honestly yeah. it was it's a hard book to read but i'm glad i did it and you it, know what it sounds it just like people a, really wanted to listen to it too so y'all yeah, talk about a month it i mean to get that perspective we <laughs> we were told uh by a, a guy who uh, hosts uh, a scholarly gene wolf podcast that uh we had some astute uh points so all right yeah that guy went to college for this sort of thing mm -hmm. we're just some yahoos on a podcast yeah. i mean we are yeah definitely nerds who did not go to school for schol for scholarly uh literature nope. studies <laughs> so none of us did that no <laughs> I literally didn't do that though, so. I mean, <laughs> wait a second. Oh no, is your degree in English? No, my degree no. is in nothing. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying is none of us have degrees in anything. Dude. I mean, like, I took some lit classes was, in college. Well, I have a theater degree. I mean, that's. Well, my minor was. Class. I had to read it's stuff. Like, yeah. It's kind of similar ish. My undergrad was in finance, guys. I'm nice. not. <laughs> I mean, and let, not, the <laughs> number of people who are actually in, in jobs from the degrees that they got in college is probably nine at tops. So, and I'm one of them. So, and you and you're one of them. <laughs> I do. So eight other people related in the world. to my degree. <laughs> That's about it. I don't do my degree. I do things related to my degree. It's close. It's close. Degree adjacent. That's cool. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> Unfortunately, I didn't. There was no writing TTRPGs courses in college or grad school for me. So yeah, it probably is now though. Yeah, it's somewhere is maybe maybe yeah. Yeah. the game design courses now. Yeah, yeah. From. So <laughs> you kids don't know how good you have it. <laughs> you could just be paying us Canadians for your, for your uh, marriage and family therapy 
master's degree <laughs> to the rest of your life. Oh, that sounds a lot like my higher education administration <laughs> degree. Yeah, I'll I also be paying like for that for a while. Yeah, I know what that's like. Story. I also have I also have multiple useless degrees. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you for joining us. And Thanks, we will everyone. be back with you next month. Uh, we will put the date in the Discord. So come join us. How's Movie Castle? Read along with us. Yep. All right. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye.